I am Vincent Von Doom, and you are listening to Disaster Survival Magazine's weekly radio broadcast. Von Doom, Vincent Vincent Von Doom. And we are back with another edition of Disaster Survival Magazine's weekly radio. I am your host, Vincent Von Doom. Listen to these winter weather driving tips from AAA which is a great service to have, by the way. I use mine every year at least three times, and it definitely pays for itself the first time you use it. We have a lot of breaking news and developments we're going to cover. The snow was finally starting to thaw from winter storm Hercules, which covered 21 states. The tri-state area was pounded with up to two feet of snow in certain areas. Hundreds of interstates and roads had to be closed. 21 dead and thousands of flights were canceled. That coupled with the polar vortex kicked off the new year and brought sub-zero temperatures to the Midwest and much of America. Wind chills reached as low as 60 degrees below zero in some places, breaking decades-old records with wind chills warnings stretching from Montana to Alabama. It was so cold that hell actually froze over. Yes, there is a small town in Michigan called Hell, and it has frozen over. Even parts of Niagara Falls has frozen. That is very rapidly moving water, so you know it's cold when parts of Niagara Falls and hell freezes over. We told you about snow and ice hitting more than a dozen states this weekend. The threat to drivers on the roads, the big weary black ice, the powerless feeling when your car starts to skid off the highway. ABC's Lindsay Davis shows us how to steer clear of the trouble. Tis the season for slipping, sliding, and spinning. Each year, there are more than a quarter of a million crashes due to snow and sleet. The most dangerous factor, what's called the hidden killer, black ice. This thin, transparent film forms when the temperature of the pavement is colder than the air above it. And while it's not always easy to spot, there are some ways to look out for it and avoid dangerous spin-outs. Mark Cox, a winter driving coach, demonstrated for us. There are two types of skids, a front wheel skid and a rear wheel skid. A front wheel skid is when you turn the steering wheel and the car doesn't turn. In that case, take your foot off the brake and off the gas and just allow the car to coast through the corner as you decrease your steering a little bit. In a rear wheel skid, the car tends to spin. That's when we apply the thing we've always heard about steering into the skid, and at the same time, accelerate gently. If you do hit a patch of black ice, keep in mind it will take at least twice as long for your car to come to a complete stop. So words of caution this time of year, slow down. Lindsay Davis, ABC News, New York. They are calling it Ice Friday, the freezing storm stretching 2,000 miles from the heartland to the East Coast, 124 million Americans across 16 states in its grip. And look at what some families are facing this weekend. Cars no match for the slick, icy highways. Neighbors pitching in to help out. Power lines dangerously caked in ice, and so are the car windows. Sidewalks turned into skating rinks and roads icy enough for sleds. Our extreme weather team is in the storm zone tonight at ABC's Devo Sonsami starts us off from the heart of the storm in Arkansas. Black ice, white ice. They're calling Ice Friday, stretching some 2,000 miles across the middle of the country, turning roads in Illinois into ice rinks with massive blowing snow, shutting down more than a dozen airports across seven states and killing at least six people. In northern Arkansas today, a man was killed when an icy tree came falling down on his home. And this was the ice versus a power line in Fayetteville. The ice won. Power flashes. Back in the city, the driver of this Little Rock bus nearly lost it on a slick road. Families stuck at home or in their cars stuck on the roads. Has to be bad if the medical school closes. Justin Roberts says this shouldn't be happening in the South. He had no gloves or boots and was using an old license plate to scrape the ice off his car. They did warn us ahead of time. Well, when it hits, it hits, and I guess nobody's really ready for it when it actually comes. This is what families are up against. Cities without the resources 
to clear the streets. All day long, and we saw one lonely snowplow. Over in Texas, the weight of the ice and snow brought down the roof of this marina. They've canceled the Dallas Marathon. Our Mike Betcher is there and says thousands of families are still in the dark. A seven-hour ice storm left more than 200,000 homes in Dallas without power. The culprit? A thick coat of ice on limbs. They snapped and brought down power lines all around the Metroplex. Tonight, utility crews brought in from other states before the storm are working overtime to remove the fallen branches and repair the lines. These freezing temperatures aren't going anywhere anytime soon, so this is going to stick around for a bit. The worst of this storm now heading north and east, greeting the residents of the Ohio River Valley tonight. Diane? All right, Steve Osinsami out of the cold tonight. And as Steve just said, thousands of power lines across the country are layered in ice, and even one inch can be dangerous for an outage. ABC's weather editor, Ginger Z, right here is tracking the power for us. Ginger. And that's why it's so important for us to talk about that Ohio Valley. The area is getting it first tonight. And for the early morning Saturday, I want to first just lay that out for you. So from D.C. to New York, it should stay mostly rain. But just north along that pink line, that's who has to watch out. And this is what we're talking about power line-wise, Diane. When you see a power line, 300 feet is all it takes, right? It's 300 feet long. And then you get an inch of ice on it. That will add 2,200 pounds to the power line and it snaps. That's not the end of our problem because even if the power line makes it through, the ice falls off when you start to thaw and it can snap back like a rubber band. The next question, are we done after that? He said it's going to stay cold and it will, but we've got another storm out west. And let me show you what's going to happen. Snow and ice for areas that are not used to it, certainly this early. Look at north of Sacramento. Two and a half inches of snow, redding over six. This could be historic snow for them. So we're going to be watching this new storm come on shore this weekend. All right. It is amazing what one inch of ice can do. Thanks so much, Ginger. And our team, of course, will be tracking the fast-moving storm all weekend long. The insurance companies are probably having a field day with this one. There has been thousands of accidents. There's uh, videos on YouTube of massive pileups and tractor trailers smashing into each other. Tractor trailers take a long time to stop, and if there's black ice and low visibility, it's a recipe for disaster. By the time the truck driver sees the pile up or the red lights, they can't slow down in time. Even if they hit the brakes hard, the momentum keeps them going, and that's how they jackknife. Do you want one of these things going 60 or 70 miles an hour hitting you with the kids in the car? I don't think so. If things are that bad, do yourself a favor. Don't even go out. If you're serious about preparedness, you should have enough supplies in your house to go a few days till the driving conditions get better. If you don't, shame on you. You're putting yourself and others at unnecessary risk. Don't go out. Wait till the road's clear. Yeah, man, that black ice is dangerous stuff. Um, it was almost like a year ago when uh, my baby was born my daughter and we were dry it was her due date we were driving on the interstate i was doing about 60 and we hit a patch of black ice i spun around six times through three lanes of traffic uh went up on two wheels the car the minivan almost flipped uh came back down spun again and we landed in a ditch the seat belt had locked on my wife's stomach she threw up because she was so nervous she thought we were gonna die i thought we were gonna die it's amazing we didn't but we ended up in the uh side of the road in a ditch um luckily we were okay it could have uh it could have been much worse um i also thought we were gonna get stuck in in the ditch but uh I uh, had enough momentum left and I accelerated it. It was enough to get me out of the ditch and back on our way to the hospital. And uh, she gave birth to a healthy baby girl. They had to put her into uh, labor because her blood pressure was high and they thought, you know, something might be wrong with the baby. And uh, But no, it, it turned out good and uh, she's going to be one years old on the, gen on the 30th, January 30th. But... Uh, I see other people driving like 90 miles an hour because they have a new car or an SUV. And I'll see these same people a few miles down the road in the ditch or in an accident. The worst is when a tractor trailer will drive by at like 70 miles an hour, 
kick up all this dirty snow on, on your windshield and uh, you can barely see, you, you practically have to stop and, and, and pull over. Um, when it's really bad out, uh, if people are uh, tailgating me, I, pe people tailgate even in the uh, in hazardous weather conditions. It's unbelievable the way some people drive. I slow down, I put my hazards on. I, you know, I don't care how slow I'm going, if other people are honking, if they have to go around me, then go around me. I, I don't care, safety comes first. Listen to these winter weather driving tips from AAA, which is a great service to have, by the way. I use mine every year at least three times, and it definitely pays for itself the first time you use it. Severe winter weather can be both frightening and dangerous when driving. That's why it's so important to know the safety rules for dealing with winter road emergencies. Here's what you need to know to stay cautious in adverse weather and prepare for winter driving. Keep your vehicle in peak operating condition and have it inspected before winter hits in full force. Pack a cell phone, blankets, gloves, hats, food, water, and any needed medication in your vehicle in case you get stranded out in the snow. Watch the weather reports and delay trips when especially bad weather is expected. If you must leave, let others know your route, destination, and estimated time of arrival. On the road, keep your gas tank at least half full to avoid gas line freeze up. Never use cruise control when driving on any slippery surface. Always look and steer where you want to go on wet roads. When driving in snow, be sure to accelerate and decelerate slowly to help maintain traction and avoid skids. Plan your maneuvers well in advance and do one thing at a time. Brake, then turn, then accelerate, and keep your speed way down. Remember, it takes longer to slow down on icy roads. Nothing happens as quickly as on dry pavement. Don't stop if you can avoid it. Instead, slow your speed and keep your car moving. This can help prevent you from becoming stuck. When you do slow down, keep the heel of your foot on the floor and use the ball of your foot to brake very gently, squeezing the pedal slowly. If you don't have somewhere you have to be, stay home. Even if you can drive well in the snow, not everyone else can. So drive cautiously, take it slow, and stay alert to stay alive this winter. Yeah, so stay off the roads, and if you do decide to go out this winter, make sure your car is up to date with all the latest repairs, and try to get make sure you always have new tires, new brakes, and uh, always make sure you have a, uh, a vehicle emergency kit. Jesse Ricca explains what we all need to have in our car before it snows here. It's Winter Weather Awareness Week here in Wisconsin, and while you should have a winter survival kit in your car, the ones we found online were between $45 and $200, but it's just as easy to make one for a lot less at your local hardware store. Snowstorms can paralyze a city. Many were stranded in their vehicle when the Groundhog Day blizzard struck in 2011. Simply stocking up now could save you from that fate this winter, and you don't have to break the bank. Man, $1.50 for a first aid kit? Not bad. Definitely need a pair of jumper cables, but I've already got one in my car, so don't need to buy those. I'm going to go with the $6 kid shovel because it's very close to the $20 car shovel, and it's just for emergency purposes. Kitty litter will help give you traction on the snow if you are stuck. And for those sub-zero temperatures, certainly need some hand warmers. It's always a good idea to have a blanket or two in your car to keep you warm if you do get stranded, but I've already got several of these at home, so don't need to take one home today. If your cell phone dies and you don't have a charger, you need a way to signal for help. Ah, uh, here we go. Fluorescent flag to let people know you're in trouble. 15 cents. If you want to upgrade your kit, you can get a flashlight that requires no batteries, or you could get a weather resistant one and just flip the batteries around so it doesn't drain out the power. Awesome, under $35.